I came across this story today that Peter Navarro, that ex-White House aide to the Orange Bastard, uh, was scheduled to turn himself in today to a federal prison in Miami. And this makes history, Navarro does, as the first former White House official to be imprisoned for a contempt of Congress conviction. He damn sure is not the first White House uh, official to be sent to prison, but for contempt. Um, He was sentenced to four months in prison because he refused to comply with a subpoena from the House Select Committee that was investigating the January 6th attempt to destroy this country. And his, uh, his conviction on that charge was really a, a, a rare, almost unknown example of a president, in this case, the filthy pig bastard Donald Trump's inner circle being held accountable by the criminal justice system for their resistance to a legitimate, lawful, legal investigation. And, of course, Peter Navarro's time in prison is happening just as the orange bastard has yet to face criminal consequences for the various crimes he's committed. I hope justice is forthcoming. Anyway, a former White House general counsel who now represents Peter Navarro, it's one of his defense attorneys, this guy said yesterday, quote, it's historic and will be to future White House aides who get subpoenaed by Congress, end quote. Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, what's the big fucking deal here? If you get a subpoena or I get a subpoena, we don't show up, we're going to go to the slam. Very simple, right? But Navarro was trying to use the, the old executive privilege bullshit that Trump has told his criminal associates, well, use executive privilege. That's all, just use executive privilege. But it didn't work. And Navarro tried to go all the way to the Supreme Court for them to intervene. That would have put off his surrender to prison. I mean, what's this guy got about prison? <laughs> oh, Peter, you know, you're, you're a very attractive man. You'll probably have a good time in prison. What are you worried about? Um, the, uh, his attorney, one of his attorneys, said, uh, I think this was in the appeal to the Supreme Court, quote, not once before Dr. Navarro's prosecution, as the Department of Justice concluded a senior presidential advisor may be prosecuted for contempt of Congress following an assertion of executive privilege, end quote. Now, the way that's worded, no, I'm not a lawyer, and and no, I do not understand uh, certain uh, little intricate maneuvers in, in federal law, but I do know that if you... If you say, screw you, to a subpoena, that you're setting yourself up for some kind of uh, of prosecution, right? Uh, And his attorneys even went so far in trying to keep this miserable bastard out of prison, they invoked the name of uh, Ann Gorsuch. Do you remember her? Well, we know who her son is. Her son is Neil Gorsuch. He is now a Supreme Court justice. But Ann Gorsuch was the EPA administrator in the 1980s under Reagan. And she was held in contempt by the U.S. House, but she was never prosecuted. Uh, Chief Justice John Roberts yesterday rejected Navarro's request for intervention to keep his law-breaking ass out of prison. All right, I wanted to share that with you. But, you know, then when I read Ann Gorsuch's name, I thought, damn, yeah, I, re- I remember all that. I remember the Reagan administration. And I hear a lot of people, and I have also, I think I've made reference to the Reagan administration here of late as being the good old days of the Republican Party. But I guess you're aware, and it completely slipped my mind, that the presidency of Ronald Reagan uh, resulted in the indictment or conviction of one over 138 Reagan administration officials. You hear me? 138 Reagan uh, administration officials were either uh, indicted or convicted. It was the largest number of any president of the United States. 
So, you know, I started digging back through Wikipedia records and so on and so forth. And I was just, once again, blown away. Now, I was, I was doing radio in 1986 when a lot of this shit occurred. And I remember just being so, just shocked, I tell you, absolutely shocked about the number of people in the Reagan administration who were either indicted or convicted. And the most well-known and politically damaging of all these scandals surrounding Reagan came to light uh, uh, in 1986. That was when the sainted Ronald Reagan conceded that his administration had, in fact, sold weapons to the Islamic Republic of Iran in an attempt to uh, free some hostages that were being held in Lebanon. Now, this is different from the hostages being held in Tehran. There were a couple of scandals there. Uh, It was also disclosed at that time that some of the money from the arms deal with Iran had been illegally funneled into a fund to aid the right-wing Contra counter-revolutionary groups trying to uh, overthrow the Sandinista government of Nicaragua. Now, don't get me started on uh, the Sandinista government right now, because they have turned out to be as fascist (sighs) as Putin or as Trump wants to be. But I digress. So that scandal came to be known as the Iran-Contra affair. And it did some heavy damage to the Reagan presidency. And then the investigations were halted when Reagan's vice president and successor, George Herbert Walker Bush, pardoned Secretary of Defense Casper Weinberger before his trial began. Now, let me go through some of the people just from the Iran-Contra crime committed by the Reagan administration. First, you had Casper Weinberger, Secretary of Defense. He would have wound up in, in, in prison had not George Herbert Walker pardoned him. Elliot Abrams, that sniffly son of a bitch, agreed to cooperate with investigators in return for being allowed to plead guilty to two misdemeanor charges instead of facing felony indictments. It's not just Trump. This has been part of the profile and and the inner workings of of the Republican-Christian fascist party for the past 50 years. This is what they do. They cannot tell the truth. They cannot lead the country. They cannot be decent. They have no morality. They have no um, institutional respect for the country that they are charged with leading. They just do not. Talk about corruption. Well, Peter Navarro, who is kicking and screaming and begging and pleading, don't send me into that briar patch. And it was John Roberts uh, who yesterday turned down this poor bastard's request to avoid prison. Well, Peter, you're going to prison, so um, just, you only have four months there. Don't worry about it. You'll be okay. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.